number four of the Quake World Championship EU qualifiers, where Duel is fast approaching its end. We only have a few more series to go, and it's been a fast turnaround. From start to finish of this entire World Championship so far, it's been good player after good player after good player, and it doesn't get much better than a player that we are about to watch right now, Evil is about to step up to the plate. He'll be facing off against Ethad, and this is to determine who qualifies for our final round of 16 on Sunday. Now, we've been saying all evening that, you know, this is the fourth and final chance to qualify. Loads of these players this you know that we'll be seeing this evening have, uh, you know, tried week after week or after week to qualify for the finals, and this is their last chance. Apparently, this is Evil's first time entering one of the four weeks. So Evil has banked everything on making the regional finals on today. This is just going all in. This is taking everything you have and go, right, guys, I'm going all in and no fear. You know, like, it, this is a I, it's I, risky. I respect it. And, he is, oh, I respect and, he, it. and clearly he is here one match away from making it into the regionals. Not regionals, sorry. Making it into the, the, the playoffs on Sunday. So clearly that confidence is well-founded. And we know Evil is one of the all-time greatest when it comes to Quake, especially well, in this region of the world. I mean, last year's QuakeCon, the legendary grand finals between Evil and that's very, That's very much like the, that's where a lot of people the Quake these days the know him, for sure. Like, it, it was such a famous set of Quake Live, and he was one of the two players, and you just can't take away from that. The difference will be, this is Quake Champions. This is a new Quake, and it's completely different to what most Quakes have been, because the game itself introduces such a dynamic range of different health, speed, armor, passives, everything all into one, requires you to, even if you're a legendary Quake player, you still have to learn the game, right? You still need to learn the game as a new thing for what it is. And I have no doubt that a player like Evil would have been doing that because that's what all of these players have been doing. They've been taking their fundamentals and just translating that into a new game with a bunch of new features. Well, a lot of these Quake players that we've been seeing, not even just these Quake players, a lot of these Quake legends that we've been seeing week after week, they have been at the highest possible level in multiple Quakes and sometimes multiple versions of the same Quake. These guys clearly love this franchise and are good at what it naturally takes to be a good Quake player and this is no different. If you can learn Quake, I know other Quakes compared to Quake 3 or you know Quake Live, it's a fair assumption that with a little bit of time you can learn a new Quake in Quake Champions. Albeit the differences are quite significant and that Champions make a big difference, but ultimately you're still shooting, you're still aiming, you're still using the same weapons. Movement remains very and similar. Movement, you know, is, is, is still what it's all about. And if you've got the skills to do that, then you can play the game. And that's what we see from player to player to player to player. And we've already seen Evil play. We know he is sick at this game. And we're about to see if he can continue to do that when it really counts. Now we are in our game four round of 16. The winner of this match will make it through to Sunday's playoff, Sunday's do or die games. And the loser, it's unfortunately going to be staying at home and will not make the qualifiers at all for the Quake World Championships. So the map is going to change. Again, the map is going to change because we have progressed throughout this tournament. Uh, the last time we we just saw the two sets back to back and the first map was Ruins of Silence because it was a similar stage. So we're now going to progress forward. Evil playing right now, though. If you told me that Evil would have qualified uh, among the rest of those that did week, in week one, players like Cooler, Cypher, these really like legendary EU players. I'm actually going to go back through my book and find the players that qualified in week one, just sort of just sort of like almost compare. Where the Sunday week one, it was the players that we saw there was Zron, Noctis, people like Neutrino, Strengths, Rel, Agent, Vu, Cooler. They were all in this week one, and obviously not all of those guys made it into it on week one. Many of those, if not all of them, eventually made it through. It's just really crazy seeing Evil this far down the line. But, you know, maybe he had things to do. Maybe he was just that confident. Sometimes real life is a thing. Oh, yeah, I mean, There's course, no getting you know, away from that. If you're not available to play on a Thursday, then you can't enter. But ultimately, he has chosen to enter this one Thursday, particularly. And here he is, one game away, or one set away, I suppose you should say. One series away. Whatever you like to call it. You know what I mean. About getting here on Sunday to then be. I mean, you think about it. He is two series away from making regionals. He's got to yeah. play today, win this one just now, and then he has to win his set on Sunday. If he does that, he makes regionals. Easier said than done, I have no doubt. Depends on his opponents. But ultimately, that is as close as both of these players are about to watch are going to be. There is going to be also an element here which uh, needs discussing, for sure, in that if you are a very dangerous Quake player, and I don't want to take away from Ethad in the absolute slightest, and I'm definitely not talking about Ethad specifically. I'm talking about the general week that we have. 
a lot of the absolute top competition have already qualified in three weeks worth of qualifiers. So this being a final week when you are considered a legendary Quake player and you're going into the final week where the competition is likely to not be as fierce. Well, what I mean really is players that are likely to take you out are no longer in the tournament. So this might be his greatest chance of qualifying because some of these players that can really bring it to him have already made it. He's not going to face them until he potentially qualifies at regionals. That being said, to get where he is now, Ethad has won the same amount of matches to get here. So you're going to fluke your way to what is effectively this part of the tournament. Oh, exactly. So you have to wait and see. 100%. I mean, can you imagine the upset if Evil doesn't make regionals, if he doesn't make even top 16 this week? There is one player who could potentially stop that from happening. And we'll find out who that is very soon. We're just currently getting the players into the game, guys. So thank you very much for your patience and thank you for bearing with us. For those of you that have just joined us, let's talk about what the players are playing towards at the moment. We, we've said it time and time again that this is the final week of qualification in EU. The players are playing towards a qualification spot at the EU regionals. Obviously, North America are doing their thing as well, and it will be the exact same format where there is qualification process into a North American regionals. The way that works is that we have a set amount of players. Eight will qualify each week. At the regionals, for both Sacrifice and Duel, the players will then have their matches live at the regionals and the players that don't make it are out, but the players that make it there will get sent directly to the Quake World Championship, which is played live at QuakeCon 2017. That's going to be really exciting, I think, because nice. QuakeCon just is this massive celebration of id titles, not even just Quake, but all of their titles, Doom, everything. But ultimately, it is all about winning and getting there. That's, that all, that matters. That's all that matters. But it's also quite close. We are so close to finding out who our qualified players are going to be and ultimately even just making it to the Quake World Championships. This isn't like, what, a month's time? Like, it's very close. Like, you're literally like, sort of speaking August time and we're in like late July. We are getting to... Oh, we're this close. close. We are this close. I mean, it, uh, to be fair, it's actually been ridiculous how fast this time has gone by anyway. I actually can't believe we're already in week four of these qualifiers. It has not felt like a month since we started at all. And just seeing like how many players have come up and stepped up to the plate, how many hours these people have put in to this game. A lot of these accounts are level 90 plus. They have played their fair <laughs> yeah, share know. of Quake but, um, champions. But ultimately, that, that's all in a month's time. I'm, I'm sure... Yeah, many of you viewers at home that might have sort of had this journey with us the whole time that have seen just how far these players have come and this is the final qualification chance this is ultimately what it all boils down to for some of these guys and evil versus ethad oh starting off with clutch a appropriately named player for an appropriate character an evil mining robot that just wants to kill every organic who's next Nix. Nix. i get we have seen a russian dangerous. special we have. I, I feel like the Russian special used to be Nyx, just in every single team. But now the Russian special is Nyx and Clutch together. <laughs> ah, there we go. There's the visor to finish things off. And uh, quite an interesting composition coming out of Ethad, though. The Blaskovitz and the key. You and don't Solag. see Blaskovic picked on Blood Covenant very often. No, I think, again, it comes down to mobility. Perhaps this is an assumption. Um, but still, we do see, tend to see like the Nyx, the Anarchy, um, the Ranger, the high mobility champions that can sort of just almost every stay, that can almost like stay on that sort of top loop of uh, where the pickups are and stuff like that and sort of just keep around that way. Here's the thing, though. You've got Clutch and Nyx on Blood Covenant. Who'd you pick first? I don't think you could be got a bad choice. I think it doesn't really matter. I think it almost depends on who do you think that Ethan's going to pick here. Who do you think your opponent's going to go with? Because Ethan has Blaskovitz, and we've already said how Blaskovitz can be um, a bit of an answer to tanky champions, these big bodies. Clutch maybe less so, because the barrier just sponges all that damage at all. But like we've already seen today, that doesn't seem to be quite as hard of a just a serious just just champion counter to counter. Because if as Blaskovitz you can bait the shield out of him, you now just have a massive target that is not going to be able to dodge your dual wield whatsoever. So it's going to be around whether he can actually put evil in enough pressure situation to, to put that barrier out early. But we'll find out whether he can very soon. I was going to be having Ethan starting with Anarchy. Like we always see Anarchy players putting him up first versus evil with that, that first pick clutch. Already, Ethan gets hit by one rail. So he's going to lose pretty much all of that heavy armor progress he just collected. Evil's hanging across the top. He's going towards Mega. Hasn't actually caught Scythe Ethan just yet. And there's another rail. So far, Evil's rails have been on point. That was not an easy rail to land at all. That is what you expect to see. Two rails, two hits. 
especially on a small champion like Anarchy, Evil's going to be getting those for sure. He's going to be super vulnerable to those rails at the very beginning. Until he can build up that injection and potentially start tanking them past 80 HP, he doesn't want to get hit by a rail at all, especially with no armor. Evil already controlling both of these pig pickups, though. Mega health and heavy armor. He has them both. Here he comes. Oh, that crispy 100 damage, but still. But look at how nowhere little he cares. close. Nowhere close to the amount of health that Ethan has. Still one, more. <laughs> still more health. Heavy armor going to be up soon. Oh, lots of damage coming in. Oh. Evil just isn't missing anything. You saw Ethan just desperately trying to juke and it just did not matter. He died with plenty of armor left because he just didn't have enough health. But ethan has gone on to Sawlag. We've already seen that the acid could be quite useful against Clutch, but just as quickly as he took to respawn, Evil's already managed to top himself up big time. Another quick snappy rail. Evil has been on point hitting these for sure. Evil was a legend of Quake Live, so he's going to know exactly how to land those last minute rails. Indeed he Ooh, is. That was almost really crisp. That was almost a fantastic jump. For the first time, I think, we've seen him miss a rail. Let's hope it's not an omen. Evil already controlling this uh, mega health once again. He thought we saw him lose a little bit of armor, so just a uh, rocket jumps up towards the rail. Oh, Ooh. tries to catch it, but a little bit ambitious, but nothing really to lose. He still has plenty of bullets left. Well, with the exception of them, of you not wanting to know where you are, then there's definitely no reason to not take a shot like that, for sure. Here comes Clutch. A few seconds away from Mega Health being up. You can tell Evil would just commanding the pickups right now. Absolute control. You just cannot knock him off of this at the moment. But because Evil has that champion advantage, he can afford to be patient if he wants. Oh, Trading rail for rail right now, but we can see that Evil has got the armor advantage. Again, he has control over everything. He's going to be getting the heavy armor. Yeah, and soon to be much more armor now he's got that heavy armor pickup. Oh, caught him just through the teleporter. Yeah, just <laughs> take the free rail and get out of there. Good call from Ithad. I think almost every single pickup in this map so far, Evil has picked up. He just isn't armor. He's not sharing. <laughs> he's just not letting Ithad have anything. Greedy Evil. And again, just, he's, he, and he's very rarely leaving this top ground. He wants to command the entire map with this high ground, of which Clutch can, the second he gets it, just an immediate rocket jump, boosts forward. Like, if he just, if he doesn't need to sit on the ground at any point. Oh, wow. Ooh, hello. He's flying into robot him. in your face. Oh, he killed himself as well. That was unfortunate. That was just, I mean, I'd say rock and a hard place, but the hard place in that situation was Clutch. It was literally just a rock wall and a big robot right there. Ethan, I mean, he either didn't fight back and just died or tried to at least take Evil with him, and Evil was just completely commanding it. Oh, first, the barrier. That's actually the first time he's popped that shield wall all game. He hasn't even needed the shield wall at any point. Oh, he knows where he's going. He can chase this. He has plenty of health and armor. Opting not to though, Evil just exercising caution. There's that one minute warning. As long as he's got that shield wall, he's going to be very hard to take down. Especially seeing as the main comeback factor of Blaskovich is going to be that dual wield and clutch with the shield active just denies everything. Oh, accidentally hits the uh, floor, so he knocks himself down. But he does have barrier though. Oh, nice rail from below. Ah, oh, he didn't even. Even though he used the shield at the very end there, I don't think he needed it at all. But just in case, he's going to pop it just to be okay, safe, I believe. Fun. It's going to be a very commanding round for Evil to start things off. Looking yeah, good. Indeed. I mean, this is kind of what we expected to see. But again, this clutch, when you've got a good player in the hands of uh, a good well, a good champion like clutch in the hands of a, of a player like Evil, things get very scary. And this is why. Oh, that was disgusting. The fact clutch can make that jump is insane. I just want to see it in third person, just to see what it looks like. You know what I mean? I know what you're talking about, yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's another one of those little bonuses with Clutch that some people may not think about, is that you can actually use your air dodge after a jump pad. So you can use the height that you've gathered from the jump pad and then exaggerate how far you go by using the air dodge at the apex of that jump. There we go again. It's just one of those things that there is a little bit of a trick to it. You kind of have to put time into making sure you can master those kind of jumps. Uh, when you do, these are I mean, rails that Ethad does not want to take at all. Just trying to finish the job with heavy machine gun, but... And another one back-to-back. -back. How many rails would he land here? 
once again. Evil, determined not to overcommit. I think he likes oh, knowing he where he's taking he had that damage. Off. Oh, last minute. Surprised. Oh my lord! Surprised the Ethan actually pushed this one. Just like that. I actually love the way Evil is playing Clutch right now, though. Normally, we actually do see Clutch players like, you know, they smell blood and they go in immediately and they get really aggressive. But Evil is just being as careful as we've ever seen a Clutch player, but he still has access to that barrier when he needs it. He still has all that health. It's like Evil is just playing to just become this almost like boss character. He's using his mobility and his health for the fights more so than he's using the shield. And by wow. the way, wow, a dual wielding lightning gun Blaskovich just got outgunned by a so low lightning gun to clutch. I know a big part of that was stack, but how it's, fast it's, it's does his health go? It's because he just picked up mega health, but also accuracy. When you're hitting every single shot from that lightning gun and you're doing wow. that much damage, no life is safe because the lightning gun, its speciality is just deleting you immediately, especially if you're an accurate player. And like you said, right, Evil, Quake Live. How prominent was the LG in Quake Live? Extremely. Not to even pull away from Ethad, like he's playing really well. I just think it's Evil's movement, his his ability to go in when he knows he has the kill guaranteed and not missing. His rails have been on point this whole set. There we go. He might go down here, popping the shield wall to avoid, but the ticking damage isn't going to do a huge amount here. And there we go. Finally, Ethan manages to secure a frag. That's going to be a really good morale booster, if anything else, just to build that confidence back up after having that clutch by himself just destroy your entire team two rounds going. Ethan managing to able to get that return, starting off with uh, Sorlag this time. I understand the choice, making a lot of sense for him, and a good shot. Again, you're saying Ethan, he's not been playing badly at any point. It's just Evil's just been playing better. Lovely prediction, Rocket. Oh, wow. Decides at the last minute to move, but takes a little bit of damage because of it. You saw the entire the entire gap that Ethan just controlled. And the last minute invisibility to use the damage reduction to avoid the tick damage. If he didn't have the Ghost Walk, he would have been 100% dead. That's when having knowledge of your champion is going to save you. That's exactly what we just saw. He was using that Ghost Walk just to keep himself alive. Oh, could this be it? Ethan, there's the aggression. No fear, running straight at Evil, putting him back on his final champion, which is going to be Visor. Here comes the Visor. Haven't seen this yet at all. Now, Visor really does. He thrives when he collects that rail, but I don't think Ethan's going to make it particularly easy for him to do that. Meeting him off by the oh. bridge. 95 HP. That's going to be an unchallenged heavy armor. Here he is. Head on. Is that enough? Oh, oh is it that miss? He missed the clutch rail. That would have been the game. He might live to regret that. We'll see how hard Evil can punish or recover from this. He does have access to Piercing Sight once again, though. But look at his health, 32 health. Even if he knows where he is, it's more going to be so he can avoid him, not so he can fight him. And once again, though, Ethad finds himself with the lead for the first time in the map. Ooh, almost thought Ethad was going to be waiting for him there. I think for a second he actually was. Here's the patience. Oh, oh, he did connect. 20 health left. Ethan's going to take that shot for sure and get a return around against Evil. That's exactly what he needs to bring himself back in. If he can keep this momentum going, he might be able to get another one. But let's not forget, Evil did lose his clutch very early on, and I doubt he's going to be quite as careless again. Been quite a running thing so far. When the clutch goes down, the rest of the team quite often has been following. He's going to stack up all these weapons. There's oh, the LG wow. coming through. I don't think he's got quite a sight of him. But he did get the heavy armor. Lots of damage coming out. Oh, unfortunately, do you see just the sheer amount of damage that Ethad did to himself in that sort of situation? Unfortunate. That was a little bit of a scramble. Um, but hang on, here comes Ethad being really aggressive. Doesn't <gasps> three health. You know why he committed. You, <laughs> you know why he committed. He was convinced Clutch was going to not survive that at all. But with three health left, just miscalculated by a tick of damage. The sucker in a in, in, in a situation like that, when you're hitting them with like a, a machine gun or a lightning gun, and you know how quickly those bullets hit, when they survive with three damage, that is literally one extra shot being the difference. If you missed one shot at any point in that sort of skirmish, that 1v1, you would have won it. And that is a sucker to remember. Oh, he's had his final option is gonna have to be this Blaskovich. Nothing left apart from a three straight comeback. We said again. before, though, last time this was a situation, it was Blaskovich versus Clutch. Uh, Evil was able to outgun a dual wielding lightning gun. 
with the his concern, own solar lightning gun. We didn't even have a barrier up at the time as well. That the was just straight up The concern way. is going to be that Blaskovich just he can't move around this map. He can't move the same way Nyx can, the way uh, Clutch can. He can't make those jumps. He can't move as quickly. So this defensive game that we might see uh, Evil try and establish, he's going to be in complete advantage here. He can make that jump to rail, and Ethad can't chase it. Ethad's trying to stop him getting this heavy armor. Barrier's going to guarantee it for sure. We use the barrier to get away. Oh, he's headed him off. Oh, that's wow. massive damage. Ethad is now so weak. And this is why Evil, he's going in for the kill. He's done the maths in his head. He knows how weak he is. He's walking into a dual wield. Ethad has to get something going right now. Is it going to be enough to get it? What One health? health. <laughs> That was 79 more damage than he needed, but I'm sure he'll take it. Ethad able to make that kill in return. Oh no, but he gets caught early. And that's a heavy armor. Evil with that ghost walk. That's that nail jump. Does fumble it a little bit, so he takes a bit of unnecessary damage. Forced to use his ghost walk. I mean, don't call it a comeback. Ethad could totally do this. I mean, I thought this wasn't going to be happening at all, considering how, how good Evil's clutch was looking versus Ethad before, but... I mean, that 1v1 really was everything. Right, the rocket's coming through, but still managed to secure the mega health. Yeah, minimal damage. He will get aggressive. That's the jump. Really trying to get any damage when he can, but he has no rail. He's only just picked it up, but that does mean that Ethad's going to be nice and healthy. And he's trying to run away here. Misses the rail again. Evil, his accuracy has been on point. Can't really be affording to miss these rails now. Ethad is on the verge of making this comeback. The danger is that now Nyx has Ghost Walk again, so he's not going to be able to use Dual Wield until after it's gone. Ghost Walk and Mega Health. This is as hard as Nyx gets to kill. This is a big gamble to use it right now, actually, because now if Ethad chooses to fight, Evil can't run away without it. I think he's going to have to catch him first. Evil's been very slippery with Nyx so far. Oh, unfortunately, actually, um, that was either a read or one of the things you can do with Nyx is because, you, because when you use a jump pad, you can ledge grab by holding uh, your jump key right near the top of the jump pad. If you're playing as Nyx and you do it too early, you actually double jump off the wall instead of using the ledge grab. He might have just tried to not put jump. himself up the top, though. You know, obviously, a lot of people sort of hover up the top of the jump oh, pad yeah, just to sure. get the guaranteed rail. Maybe just didn't want to give that to Ethad. I mean, it, it, could have been, well, it could have been one or the either one. Because we're so far in the tournament, I'm inclined to think it was an intentional dodge, but it's definitely something that can happen by accident if you're playing as Nyx. Oh, hits the rail. Ethad very low now. He'll be forced to get away. Here we go, it's the one minute warning. But Nyx, ah, nice rail. Again! Oh my wow. lord, the reactions on Evil for that kill. Incredible stuff. And Evil looking as on point as we expected him to. For I mean, most of these weeks, right, for most of these weeks, when you have those really like thread the needle style rail shots where you've got like a small amount of the screen and if they can get the rail in between that, they need to have quick reactions to see the model. Most of the time, those shots either don't get taken or they miss. miss. Evil made every single one of those. And I think that's just his experience with playing in a setting like that, where you just have like a decision, you're waiting for them to come around the corner, you see it, and you just react in that split second to get the damage. And it worked out twice just then. That was quite a swift map, though. Obviously, signs of life. Ethad is definitely... Ethad was looking good. He's definitely sure. not going down for free. Um, but ultimately, Evil is definitely commanding this so far. You know, I mean, but that's what we kind of expect to see from a player that, that, that is quite as successful as Evil is overall. I mean, we're kind of weren't sure, like I said, this might be his, as far as we've been told, this is his first week entering the actual Duel Cup itself. So we weren't really sure what to expect in terms of, like, um, tournament sort of, I guess, sort of just holding his nerve, especially considering this is, like, the last week. So this is, like, without a doubt, the most stressful week to enter, especially if it's your one and only week you have entered. So I think that that's probably the... I'd say that the most stress someone can feel, especially when you're now one match away from making uh, the qualification stage on Sunday, you know, where you sort of go for the regionals itself. That's nerve-wracking when you've both won and lost a map. Because sure. if you've lost the map, it's, oh no, I'm one map down, and now I have to win two maps in a row, otherwise I'm out. And that can be stressful. On the flip side, it's, I've won a map. All I have to do is win this one map, and I'll move on which in some ways can be just as stressful because it's a lot of pressure riding on that one map, no matter whether you've won or lost. So but what map do you think we're going to be going into next? Sorry, I feel like I just cut you off there. No, no. Um, My bad. So we just saw Blood Covenant, which is going to be a map everyone's going to be familiar with because it's such a classic map. Do we see Blood Run to maintain that? Or do we go completely new? First of all, I would not give Evil Corrupted Keep. 
I would I would not even try. Don't even give him that that map of which Clutch and Nyx are so dangerous on. Because I'm inclined to think when you see someone go with Clutch, that seems to be a very consistent pick. I don't think we see a lot of people go Clutch just because it's the map. When we see people pick Clutch so far, they ride it all the way. It doesn't matter what map they're on, he is core to their team comp. Nyx normally tends to be quite similar. So I'm willing to bet that we're going to see Evil go with both Nyx and Clutch, and the variable might be an extra champion depending on the map that we go on. And because of that reason, I would not give him Corrupted Keep at all. And also, the visor pick might not be quite as essential on Corrupted Keep, even though we have seen it yeah, before. If we get a Blood Run, even though we haven't, we have, we have seen it before. We've already seen Visor do a lot of stuff on Ruins and Blood Run, particularly. But perhaps Ruins of Sarnath could be the choice, just so you've got that extra space just to get away. But ultimately, you know, Evil has been taking the fight to me. He hasn't actually been chasing down quite as much as we see other players so far. He's been sort of going. He's more... been chasing with rails from far away. <laughs> he, he, that, that, but that's been how he pursues you. He doesn't pursue you by literally just following you. He just goes to where he thinks you're going to go with rails. But it is actually going to be Corrupted Keep. Ethan now starting with Anarchy. Evil straight in with Clutch. No messing around at all. And it is that vanilla Clutch. It, I'm willing to bet that we should see a, simil a similar comp here. Instead of a visor, it might have been the Blaskovich. We'll see if he goes next finally. Could so here we go. It, it, you, it, so like you were somewhat correct. In in this case, the variable was Blaskovich. So it was Nyx and Clutch as a core, and his map specific champion was Blaskovich, which makes sense because we're on Crypto Keep, and it's a good map for him. Oh, I just thought Evil was gone Blaskovich. How accurate has he been with LG and Rail so far? What is the easiest weapon to secure for certain spawn points if you're near the Mega Health? He yeah, is just good point. He has just taken Blaskovich. Do you remember we saw Cypher play on uh, Corrupted Keep yep. with uh, Blaskovich? Yep. And it was quite possibly the fastest round I think I've ever seen. Yep. Now Evil's got that. But Evil also has Nyx, that he's already been doing ridiculous things with, and Clutch, that he's already been a complete bully with. I think Evil's team composition could not be more perfect for how he's playing at the moment. But that's what's working really well for him, because I, I kind of feel like there is no single map where Clutch and Nyx don't work well together. And if you go with a map specific third champion, it's almost like no map is bad for you because you've got the one champion that fits the map like a glove. Well, that's and what then I say, you've got right? two core champions that work for real. Bear in mind that I know this was um, Ethad's map choice. So I have no doubt he's got some confidence here and he knows what he wants to achieve. Immediately trying to meet him by the rocket, trying to head off Evil. Unfortunately, let him collect the rocket anyway because it was just a little bit too late. But we'll see if Ethad can really pull something out of the bag here. This was his map choice. Even though it benefits Evil's team greatly, I have no doubt that Ethad will do something here too. Already both the power-ups will be up quite soon though. Ethad trying to stock himself up again. Which one does Evil prioritize? The health of the armor. A nice trail of LG and Mega Health. Caught on the jump pad, but Shield Wall is going to do a great job of just nullifying that damage. And those three collectibles already. If you lose your ability the very moment you collect three hourglasses, it almost halves the time. Ooh, wow, that's a lot of damage coming through with one, one health. One health again! I was about, if he survives with one health again, Ethad is not going to be a happy chappy. He's gone straight in with Blaskovitz, though. He's going to know the health has just gone. Or only a tribe what left to go. Oh, he just went straight into a super shotgun. Make that two. Point blank, dual wield. I yeah, mean, a... he's going to take that frag back down. Blaskowitz is going to get that return. Oh, oh the mid -air. Mid -air. Does he have the health to survive this? I think he does, only just. But he's going to get followed? No, he isn't. He said, there's no denying, though, that he saw that number tick down. So he's going to know exactly where evil is. Let's not forget, though, that dual wield does have quite a substantial cooldown to it. Still only about 15 seconds left to go, but we're close to 10 now, but still Ethad manages to get that mega health, so it's gonna be nice and stocked up. You can we see that Evil has access to Super Shotgun, LG, and Rocket. Headed him off, but still lots of health left. You know, Ethad just does not want to drop down. He wants to keep this height advantage, and I can't blame him. Oh, he jumps down anyway. He wanted to go in for the kill. As soon as he sees the acid spot, he but goes. He's nowhere near some health. He has to try and get some health right now. 15. That is barely alive. And there's that health to be jumped. He's going to do a good job to at least get him back up to half. It's dangerous when you get caught by that at such low health. But it's also very dangerous knowing that your opponent has seen you do that. 
Because just to point out for those that may be newer to the game is that when Sawlike hits you with that acid spit, the number values will obviously appear anywhere on screen, which applies to the tick damage. It kind of acts as like a mini radar. You can see people through walls because you just look at the damage numbers. Oh, that damage is adding nice. up quickly in Evil. Evil immediately turned around and finished that fight when he realized just how much damage he was doing. That is an underappreciated skill, I think, which is quite easy to miss at first glance. It's just the quick, like, on-the-spot calculation of the amount of damage you've done and whether it's good to go up and, fi and finish people off. Oh, that was a damaging rocket. Both Blaskovich is having their dual wield, but man, they don't even get the chance. Evil's rocket's too strong. And he's going to be up one round. I we didn't see much clutch here, though. Didn't get the chance to. He lost it very early. But if, if anything, this is just letting us know that clutch is definitely not... Clutch isn't his crutch. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's definitely not I his only champion. There. Yeah, yeah, it was very smart. Uh, no, it's definitely not his only champion he's good with. You know, even his Blaskowitz, we didn't get to see that any time last time because he didn't pick it. Even now, we can just quickly pick the champion and bam, it's like game changing. Now, and already down on 50 health, he actually might be in a really bad situation yeah. here. This was really important for Ethad because he managed to get the shield wall out of evil unbelievably early. Even with that 75 health, he oh, lands in the lava. lava. No. Uh oh. Taking unnecessary damage, and Ethan actually almost got a frag because of the sheer amount of super nail gun damage he took. But as you can see here, because he used his injection more than healthy enough for the next fight, did a nice amount of rocket damage. But he himself, unbelievably weak, with no armor behind him. Evil still looking. He's on a nice amount of health here. Yeah, he was just doing mega to... health. Oh, there we go, the point blank. Oh! He took a lot of health, but still has loads of armor to work with. Doesn't head him off though. Hang on a minute. Here comes Ethan being aggressive. Gets knocked into the air though. Even with that increased air mobility, was not able to avoid the sheer amount of damage. That was a big mistake from Ethad. He went down for the aggression, accidentally shot the pillar that he went near, kept himself in the air, took a ton of damage. He's caught him early. The acid comes through, but doesn't matter the melting damage of the LG. Goodbye, Sorlag. And he's caught a really good spawn on Blaskovich, who only has a tri bolt and a starter gun behind him. He's going to have dual wield, but. I'm not sure if that's going to be enough. And a 98 damage. They go for the duo to seal the deal. And Evil does just that. And he's on match point. I mean, One round away. You did say don't give Evil Corrupted Keep. He gave Evil Corrupted Keep. And he is now on one round away from advancing through and qualifying for Sunday's playoffs. I feel like it must have just been a decision that he must have been confident with. He must have gone, well, I know his team composition will benefit this. But I feel like I'm going to do well on this map too. It's just so far, Evil has just been able to really maximize how his team has been working on this map in particular. And that, again, that was another round that Evil lost, lost crutch. Uh, clutch! Jesus! <laughs> Good lord, the tongue twister. Evil has lost clutch. <laughs> you should never you should never have said that to begin with. I think you're going to make this mistake all night. I know, the tongue twister. He, but <laughs> that was the second round he's lost a <laughs> clutch straight away. You're going to have to... It's because round starts with an R. I'm really bad at that. <laughs> but that's the second round he lost clutch straight away. <laughs> You're really focusing you on that. You the hesitation. <laughs> you can hear the hesitation. I'm trying my best. Give me a break. I'm not well. You just I'm an unwell. I'm a poor boy. You just accidentally insulted clutch players everywhere. <laughs> that's not what I meant. Myself included. I hate you. But no, look. Okay, so we're almost at one minute in and he still has clutch, which is already an improvement or, uh, that we've seen before. And he is actually getting aggressive. Still has barrier too. Hasn't needed to use it. Well, he hasn't lost it early. And I think that's actually going to be quite a dangerous thing here for Ethad in that it was great for him in the other two rounds because he had a good start because he got clutch immediately. But so far, he has not been able to do as much of a good job. And there we go. And, uh, well, at this stage, it's this could snowball. He's got sore lag, but I like look how at how evil, evil doesn't just preemptively pop the barrier for the sake of it. He always seems to wait until the, the, the time is right. You know what I mean? Like, he doesn't panic. He doesn't just put the barrier up straight away. But at this stage, the more stacked Evil becomes in combination with that shield wall, even though it's Sawlag and Sawlag's acid will go through the shield. Oh my, look at the tracking! Oh, so much damage and the direct! Oh, pain. Oh dear. One champion away, Ethad. His tournament life hangs in the balance as Evil and this big scary robot is just trying to deny him from something. He's, he's going in first, face first, but he's got two machine guns and he flies out the window! But it doesn't matter. That was uh, an exchange at the very end there. But Evil is going to come off victorious in that situation. So well played. We'll see him again on Sunday. Have you ever killed someone so hard that you blew yourself out of a window in the process? <laughs> No, but now Evil can say he has. But now Evil has, for sure. He went face first into a Blaskovich with two super shotguns.
I mean, that's bravery. And I mean, that was a... Uh... Evil is not afraid of Mr. Wolfenstein, and that is why. I mean, well played. Ethan played well for, for sure in both maps, but ultimately Evil, I mean... The, the guy has that reputation for a reason, and I have no doubt we'll be seeing similar levels of play from him in Sunday's playoffs. Getting through today, we are now, and Evil with that clutch from start to finish looking really strong. We have, in a few days' time, we'll be finding out the final the final qualifiers, but that's not finished. We still have a few series left to go today. Well, first of all, Blood Covenant. I mean, this was a really good start for Evil because at the end of the day, clutch first is clearly a very dangerous tactic. And right there, I, mean, I know it's because you've got the mega health, but when you're able to challenge a dual wielding Blazkowicz with a single one, I mean, I, I believe we've only really seen Cypher be able to do that um, instead, where I think even that case, he was even weaker. So. It was just good aiming. Like, it was confident plays. And we said it yourself, this is his first tournament in the World Championship. This is Evil's first week that he's entered. So the fact that he's been able to play this confidently, um, I think even right there, these last minute rails, like, he caught him for a, a split second. I think that that was probably one of the most impressive frags we've seen all day when he just threaded the needle with that rail. And this, I'm, I'm not even sure if it was like semi-prediction, semi-reaction, like whatever it was, it was beautiful to watch. I hope we got the replay where he blew himself out of the window in victory. <laughs> we can hope, we'll find out in soon. In victorious this, this celebration. Thing, that, that was just tracking. Look at that tracking and there we go. Ethad was just trying his hardest juke. This is it. Just could not do it. This is the one. Come here, boy. He chased him down. He killed him and then went, you know what? I have done with this world. I'm fed up. Done. Out. I'll see you on Sunday, mate. And that he will, as he's now qualified for Sunday's playoff. So it basically means Evil is one series away from making the regionals, and he's not gonna be able to play it until Sunday. So he's got a few days to really think about how this is gonna work for him. Right, so once again, guys, we have more sets to get through, and we have a really special one coming up. I'll tell you what it's gonna be after the break. And on that note, we are gonna cut away to a quick break while we set it up, and we'll be right back.